All right. In this video, we consider the following simple problem. Prove that the set of rational numbers is a field. Okay. And before proving, giving a wrong proof of this, let us review the definition of a field. So let's say F is a set with two operations, addition, whatever that is, and multiplication, let's say cross. which satisfy uh, 11 axioms, 11 set of rules. Okay, so the first one is, it, F is closed under addition. That is for all pairs of elements of F, we have A plus B is an element of F. So, so this is called closure. Condition of addition. And second, uh, for all A, B again, uh, which are elements of F, we have A plus B equal to B plus A. So this is called commutativity. Commutativity of addition. Okay, three. Uh, addition is associative. So that means for any three elements, triple of elements of F, we have uh, first we add B and C and then add to that A. That is equal to A plus B plus C. So this is called associativity. of uh, addition. And four, uh, there exists a special element called zero. Uh, this is a, just a symbol, okay? It's not, it may not be equal to the number zero, but it's just a symbol we use for expressing this particular element satisfying the following rule. So there exists a special element zero in F such that uh, for all elements of F, we have A plus 0 is equal to A. Okay, so existence of 0 element. And 5. Uh, for all elements of F, there exists its additive inverse, uh, which we denote by negative a, you know, this may not be just, it's not a negative of any number, so it's just a uh, way to express uh, the, the additive inverse of element A. Uh, so for all element A in F, there exists an element, an element called negative A, such that uh, A plus negative A is equal to zero. So this is called additive inverse. Okay. And so far we've been uh, dealing with only additions. Okay, additions. And next we consider multiplication. And F is closed under multiplication. So that means for all pairs of elements in F, we have A times B is also an element of F. So this is called closure of multiplication. Okay. And seven, multiplication is associative. So for all elements of A, uh, F, uh, pairs of elements A, B of F, we have A times B is equal to B times A. Again, this is commutativity. And eight. 
multiplication is also associative. So for any elements a, b, c of f, we have a times b times c is equal to a times b times c. So first we multiply b and c, and then multiply a by a. That is equal to, first we multiply a and b, then multiply that with c. So they are equal. So this is associativity. T, V, T. And 9. Uh, there is a special element called 1. Okay, There exists an element called 1. This 1 is may not be equal to the number 1. So since this F is a general set, this may not be a set of numbers. So this 1 is just a symbol. Okay, It may not be a, be a number. Okay. Anyway, so there exists a an element called 1 such that for all elements of f we have uh, a times 1 is equal to a. So this is called, called multiplicative identity. Multiplicative identity. And 10. Uh, it's about the inverse element of uh, A. So for all elements of A of F, uh, if uh, elements of F and A is not equal to 0, okay? So this 0 is, uh, means this 0. Okay, this the additive uh, identity uh, for all elements of A. There exists. Uh, maybe I should write if if A is not equal to zero, there exists an element called A inverse. Let's write like this such that uh, a times a inverse a times a inverse is equal to 1 this one is this one okay multiplicative identity and lastly is the distributive law so for all elements a b c in f we have a times b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c. Okay, so again, so let's repeat. Uh, a set f equipped with two operations, addition and multiplication, it's said to be a set be a field if it satisfies all these axioms. So let's go back to the original uh, problem. Let's prove that Q is a field with ordinary addition and uh, multiplication. Okay. To do that, we need to prove all the all the axioms. So first, uh, here's the wrong answer. First, so if this is a field, then it should be closed. Uh, under addition, right? So for all a, b in the set of rational numbers, we have a plus b belongs to q. And two, for all elements a, b in, excuse me, in q, we have a plus b equal to b plus a. And three, and so on. Uh, so let's uh, write all of them uh, at once. So here's the list of all the axioms uh, that should be proved. So I see some students say this is the proof that the set of rational numbers is a field. So you know we have listed up 
all the axioms here, 11 axioms. So for, for example, for any pairs A and B, we have A plus B is an element of, it's a rational number, right? And it's commutative, associative, and there is an element called zero, and there is additive inverse, uh, multiplication is closed, and uh, multiplication is commutative, associative, and there is a multiplicative inverse called one, and there is multiplicative, uh, multiplicative identity called one, and there is, uh, for every non-zero element, there is multiplicative inverse, and we have distributive law. So, and that's it. So what's wrong with this proof? Uh, the problem is here we have we just listed all the axioms to be proved now that these are to be proved but it's there's nothing proved here you know we say if a and b are elements of q a plus b is an element of q but this should be proved okay so how do we do that so if a and b are elements of q then we can express a and b as for example uh, m over n and b is uh, p over q where m n p q are elements of integers they are integers and uh, n and q are not zero right so if that's the case then we if we add these two numbers we have this and so we just apply the usual addition of uh, between rational fractions so we have mq plus uh, np over nq but now uh, m Q plus NP is an integer and NQ is an integer because they are all integers right and also NQ is non-zero because neither N nor Q is zero therefore MQ plus NP over NQ is a rational number Therefore, a plus b indeed belongs to the set of rational numbers. So in this way, we have to prove every axiom. So what about this? What about this? What about this? And so on. And let's pick this one. Uh, so what is zero? What is the zero element? of the set of rational numbers it is so this zero should be expressed in terms of a fraction of uh, ratio of two integers right so p and q are integers and q is non-zero okay so of course, as you know it, uh, so zero here means zero over any integer, any non-zero integer, okay? So this zero is the zero as an integer. This Q is of course an integer, but just not integer, it's a non-zero integer, okay? So this zero of a rational number is actually an equivalence class of this type of rational numbers, okay? So for example, zero over one, zero over two, zero over negative one, uh, 123, they are all equal to zero of, a rational, of the set of rational numbers. Okay, so they are actually somehow uh, equivalent. So, 
we all consider all these uh, elements of rational numbers as equivalent and regard them as equally as zero element. Okay, and if so, if we have that, then for any elements of uh, the set of rational numbers, so let's say zero over c, where c is non-zero, plus a b over b. So by the rule of uh, addition of between two fractions, we have this. 0 times b as a multiplication between two integers is 0. And ca is ca, cb. And uh, this is 0 plus ca is just ca, right? And we can cancel this C out. So we have A over B. Therefore, this is equal to just AB. Therefore, this element, 0 over something, is considered as the 0 element of the rational numbers. So in summary, in order to prove that the set of rational number is a field, it is not sufficient to just list all these axioms. But, to, but we need to prove each of these axioms more explicitly, uh, like this. So uh, we need to know what we mean by a rational number. So we mean by a rational number the ratio of two integers. And based on that, uh, we prove each of the axioms. And that's it.